Hello everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to spend the next 10 minutes or so with you talking about our manure injection studies in alfalfa and grass here in New York. We work in a dairy dominated state so when I talk about manure injection in this presentation I'm talking about liquid manure from the dairy facilities. Let me start with introducing our team. My name is Corinne Ketterings. I am a professor at the Department of Animal Science at Cornell University and I lead the Cornell Nutrient Management SPEAR program. Amir Sadapur was our postdoctoral researcher on the project, Greg Godwin is our field technician, and Carl Zimmick is our colleague with the ProDairy program in Cornell University. We started these trials back in 2014, driven by two main questions that came from farmers, farm advisors, and a, a consulting uh, operation as well. The main questions were, will the grass and alfalfa stands benefit from the application of manure? And secondly, if we apply the manure by injection, is it possible that the injection reduces the yields overall due to mechanical damage of the root system? We looked at these questions at two locations. One was our uh, Aurora Research Farm in central New York, where we had access to a fourth-year alfalfa stand and a fourth-year tall fescue stand. Both of these stands were older stands, low producing stands. So we can describe that as rescue scenarios. Can we, can we increase our yield by applying manure to these fields? The second set of trials was conducted at Hartford, New York at a dairy facility. And at that location, we had access to two second year alfalfa stands that were higher producing, well managed, uh, recent manure history type fields. So higher producing scenario than at Aurora Research Farm. We had four treatments at all of those locations. The first one on the list here says no manure addition, no slicing, no manure. That's basically our control. The second was labeled as disc down, no manure, which means we sliced the soil with the injector, but we did not apply the manure. The third treatment here is injection of liquid dairy manure. And the fourth one is the application of the same amount of dairy manure on the surface without injection. With this set of treatments, we were able to evaluate it, to evaluate whether injection itself, the mechanical action of injection, would harm the fields and the yield, and whether manure addition would benefit the crops. At the alfalfa trial in Aurora, we applied manure after first cutting in 2014 at 4,000 gallons per acre, and we applied it also after first cut in 2015 at the rate of 8,000 gallons per acre. So we followed two production years at this location with once a year applications after first cutting. The toll fescue trial, we did the same thing, but we had a second application after third cutting. So manure was applied after first and third cutting in 2014 at 4,000 gallons. And in 2015, at after first and third cut at the application rate of 8,000 gallons. At the Hartford location, Manure was applied after fourth cutting in 2014 at 4,000 gallons and again after first cut in 2015 at 8,000 gallons. The reason why we have differences in manure application rates, the 4,000 and the 8,000, is in part because we had two different pieces of equipment. In 2014 we got started with a Veinhuis injector unit that was on loan from the USDA ARS in Pennsylvania. And this is a picture of that unit. With this unit, we could precisely add 4,000 gallons per, per acre. In 2015, we made use of this piece of equipment uh, in collaboration with Scott Potter, who's a custom operator in the area. He had modified a Veinhouse unit, um, as you can see, and, and mounted it on a, uh, a tanker and we could use this uh, piece of equipment to apply the application rates in 2015, but we could not go as low as 4,000 gallons, and hence the 8,000 gallon per acre rate for the 2015 applications. When it's fully operating, this rig will uh, fold out on both sides, uh, but for our, uh, our plots themselves, we uh, had to fold up the sides and apply at just the inner, inner space. This is what it looked like, the four different treatments. On the left top, this down, no manure. And on the right top corner, injected manure. On the left, no manure. 
and on the left on the right surface applied manure without injection. We took lots of measurements in these trials and what I will be presenting to you today are the results of our yield measurements and we are using yield in this case as an indicator of potential for damage or benefits from manure application. I want to remind everybody that the stands in Aurora were really old stands. Uh, it was alfalfa, it was grass, uh, but low producing. The stand in Hartford was a, in the stands in Hartford were new. Second year when we started injecting and we measured uh, the third year uh, production year. Here's some of the results. A uh, comparison of with and without manure addition. When we looked at our four treatments, we noticed there were no interactions between whether the discs were down or up, or whether it was surface applied or injected. So we summarized the treatments um, in two groups, no manure versus manure, and then disc up versus disc down. This particular graph shows for the six locations that we have here, Aurora Tolfescu 2014-2015, Aurora Alfalfa 2014-2015, and then the Alfalfa, the two Alfalfa fields in Hartford, New York. The difference in yield between no manure application and manure application. If we look at the total on the right, we can look at the total yields for the season. Keep in mind that some of these numbers do not include first cutting or fourth cutting, especially not for the Tolfesque field. We also had a uh, very dry 2014 that impacted our results too. But across the board, you can see when you look at these comparisons of no manure versus manure, that in Aurora for the toll fescue, the first year benefited from manure application, the second year greater benefit from manure application. The alfalfa fields also benefited from manure in both 2014 and in 2015. And then we go to the higher yielding alfalfa sites at the Hartford location. Keep in mind these are the fields with a uh, recent manure history. There the manure did not impact our yields for either of the two fields. No significant differences in yield for the Hartford farm. Based on that, we conclude from these uh, comparisons that manure benefited the stands in Aurora, the fourth and fifth year stands. It did not increase the yield of second year alfalfa. Slicing or not slicing the soil. This is the mechanical damage, the evaluation of whether injection itself harms the stand. We see the same trials here, the same following order. Let's look at the total columns again. Total for Aurora 2014, we see no difference between disc up and disc down. Basically implying that the discs themselves do not harm the yield. Same thing in 2015, no differences. 2014 alfalfa stand was not hindered by the injection either. The alfalfa stand in 2015 yielded the same across both treatments. And in the higher yielding fields in Hartford, also no difference between disc up this down in either of the two locations. So based on this we concluded that slicing did not benefit nor harm any of the stands. And it didn't matter if it was an old run out grass field or alfalfa field or a highly producing uh, second year stand as we had in Hartford. So to summarize and draw some preliminary conclusions recognizing that it's a small data set, we conclude that manure increases hay and alfalfa grass hay and alfalfa yields, regardless of the application method, there was no yield benefit or penalty from injection of the manure. And the benefits in terms of yield increase were higher for the hay fields, the grass hay fields, than for the alfalfa fields. We conclude with that, that uh, according to these sites, injection can be implemented without negatively impacting the yields in hay crops. We published an extension article based on this work. Um, this is the link to that article. It appeared in a What's Cropping Up Field Crops newsletter uh, at Cornell University uh, just before Christmas break. So anybody who's interested in reading a little bit more about these experiments can uh, access this extension article. And with that I want to leave you with uh, some acknowledgements of the funding sources that uh, allowed us to do this work and my email just in case anybody wants to follow up with any questions, I'd be happy to address those. Thank you.